Hey guys, it's Jacqueline. So today I wanted to film the how I did my makeup in high school kind of challenge that's going around. I think these videos are absolutely hilarious and I could not get enough of them. I just think it's so funny to kind of look back at the makeup techniques that you used to do and like the makeup that you used to wear. And I don't know, at the time I thought that my makeup was awesome. I thought like I knew what I was doing. I was like, I watch beauty gurus on YouTube, like I know what's up. Um, but no, looking back, I did not know how to blend my eyeshadow. I just had no concept of blending at all. And like concealer just was something that was non-existent and not even in the equation. Um, wow, yeah, it was just not cute. And even if you look back on my YouTube channel, some of my earliest videos that I posted, like you can see the evolution of my makeup. Um, I think a lot of it is just you learn with practice and then you learn really what doesn't work and what works. But nonetheless, it's absolutely hilarious to look back what I used to wear. So basically, I have all the makeup here that I used to use when I used to do this type of makeup. Um, and I wouldn't necessarily wear this makeup to high school because I was not a big like makeup wearer when I was in high school. I would just kind of put on some mascara and that was enough for me. But when I would go out to like events or like concerts or if there was like a special occasion, I would like glam myself up. And it was not good. Um, okay, I'm kind of dreading this, but I'm also kind of excited for this. So I think we might as well hop on into it. Okay, so I'm gonna start off with foundation, and this is the actual foundation that I used. And looking back, I have no idea why I bought such a high-end foundation for like my first foundation, but it was at the time where everyone was raving about this foundation on YouTube, so I was like, I have to get it. So I saved up my money, and then I bought the Chanel Vita Lumiere Aqua Foundation. And I can specifically remember going out to the store, and I got color matched in this foundation. And I intentionally chose the shade darker, because I thought it would make me look more tan and like more sun-kissed, which was, not correct at all. It's just very orange on me. And I used to just use my hands to apply it. I didn't have any foundation brushes or anything like that. So I used to just kind of dot it around like this. Then I would just rub it in. Okay, so to be fair, this foundation color doesn't look that bad right now. But keep in mind, I used to use this foundation year round. Like I had no concept that I should get a lighter foundation as I got paler in the winter. So I would just use this when I was a lot paler, so it would look 10 times worse. And also too, at the time that I was wearing this foundation, I never thought to blend it down my neck or like blend it to my ears or anything like that. So I'm sure I had very harsh lines of like foundation, which did not help because it was already too dark for me and way too orange for my skin. So I'm sure it was very obvious. Ooh, I haven't used this foundation in so long. I think just because I'm slightly traumatized from when I used to wear this. But it is a nice foundation, to be fair. I just used it so incorrectly and had the wrong color. Um, but that wasn't all that I would do. Instead of going in with like a concealer to kind of pinpoint conceal any blemishes on my face or to like, you know, cancel out any under eye, um, under eye darkness, I would just go in with another layer of foundation, which... I don't know what I was thinking, like I just thought I should put on an entire new layer and somehow that would make it all look more even. I, I still honestly don't understand what I was thinking. So since I have a couple of blemishes here, what I probably would have done at the time is gone back in with the full, full face amount and instead of just again focusing it on that area, I would just do another layer. I think at the time, what I was thinking was that if I put another layer of foundation everywhere, it would draw less attention to the one spot that really needed the extra coverage, which is just not how makeup works, but I think that's what I was thinking at the time. I also, for some reason, would like completely avoid my eyes. I would never blend the foundation like over my eyelid or even bring it up to under my eye. I just didn't put anything under there. Again, I don't know why. Um, next, I would set my foundation and I would use the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish in Medium Dark. I am definitely not medium dark. This color is, again, just way too dark for me. But going back to that mindset of uh, if I use darker makeup products, I'll look more tan. No, that's not how it works. So I normally would just kind of brush this all over my face. And then what I would do, if I knew I was gonna be out, say like at a concert and I thought I was gonna get hot or like sweaty and my makeup might move, I would just put on like double the amount of powder that I needed. So that way if it kind of sweated through one layer of powder, I'd have another layer. So I would like triple powder my face sometimes, which looked so bad. But I was trying to be preventative instead of just bringing some powder to touch up. Okay, so that would be my base all done. And then normally I would go in with some bronzer because I loved bronzer. I still do to this day. Um, I used to love the NARS Laguna bronzer. 
And again, I still love this product to this day, but I just applied it very poorly. So I normally would take a big fluffy brush like this and then I would just kind of like go back and forth and just like douse the brush in that product. And then I would do like that 3E -E kind of technique. But since the brush was so big, it wouldn't like define anything. It would just kind of look very muddy. And if you're recreating this look at home, just really make sure that you're smothering the brush in that product. And then back on the other side. And then normally at the end, I just kind of top up my cheeks a little bit because I wanted those to be the most bronzed. <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking, guys. I really don't. And like, no one ever told me that my makeup looked bad. That's the worst part. They just let me do this. My parents didn't say anything. Next, I would go in with this blush, and this was actually the first blush that I ever owned, and I loved it to death. This is the Bobbi Brown blush in 11 Nectar, and this is actually a really pretty color, but it's probably a little too um, cool for my how tan my skin is right now. Um, it's more of like a blue base kind of pink, but I would pop that on. I did use a brush for this, thankfully, but I normally would just kind of apply that. I would smile and apply that right to the apples of the cheek. I kind of stamp it on there like that. And then I kind of blend it back a little bit, but really keeping most of the placement right on the apple there. I would always bring my blush way too high. Like I've got fairly high cheekbones, but I would put it right, right up there. I'd bring it right up there. Next, I would just move on to eyeshadow. I would just completely skip eyebrows altogether. I didn't think that I needed to fill in my eyebrows and I didn't really understand the point of filling in my eyebrows, so I never would. Um, and then I would use the Naked Palette for eyeshadow. This was, uh, I used this so much. I mean, I still use it a lot today, but I love this thing to death. And I specifically, I remember using Half Baked, Smog, and Dark Horse. Those were like my three colors. Um, yeah. I'll show you what I did, don't you, don't you worry. So first what I would do with this is I would take my ring finger and just swipe that in half baked and get a lot of product on your finger there. And then close your eye and just stamp the product all over the entire lid and really pack that product on there. Then I normally would just take like a little either Q-tip or just use my fingers and make sure that the line wasn't too harsh where the gold stopped. And then what I would do, I would normally go in with smog next. So again, same finger, no need to wipe it off. Just build on top of that. And now I'm gonna stamp this just on the outer, like the outer third of the lid. Oh, I got some underneath. No worries, just wipe that away. Okay, so at this point, I normally would go in with some type of brush, whether it be, sometimes I would even use like a big powder brush and just kind of blend it in. I'm gonna use this blending brush here. I didn't have it at the time but I would find something to make do. And I would just kind of smudge that line out. So sometimes I would just kind of leave my eyeshadow there and that would be the end. But if it was like an extra special occasion or I really wanted to look, you know, extra fancy, I would go in with this dark horse color, the darkest one there. And I would take a pencil brush. I actually, I think I own this brush. This was, again, one of like the first brushes that I owned. It's the MAC 219 brush, like a little pencil smudger brush. So I would load up the product there and I would try to do what I thought was like more of a cut crease. So I would, I've got a lot of product on my brush right now. So I would just kind of tilt my head back and then put this all into my crease. And then I would also just kind of make a line from the outer corner of my eye and just attach that. Then I would dip back again into that dark horse color and I put that just on the outer bottom third of my lash line. Okay, and then to finish off the eye look, I would go in with either um, Dark Horse, the darker brown, or Creep if I was feeling extra daring. And I would put that on an angled brush, and I would use that as like an eyeliner. But again, I would really just focus it on like the outer third of my eye. Okay, so that would be it for the eyeshadow. Then I would move on to mascara. Now this was probably like my favorite part of doing my makeup just because I loved having very clumpy, thick, spidery lashes. I have like no lashes to begin with. They're very, very short and almost non-existent. So I thought if I would like curl them completely upward and then coat them with tons of mascara, it would look like I had long lashes, which it definitely didn't, but that was my uh, reasoning. So I used to curl them a lot, and I would even sometimes like, you know, bend it back to get that extra curl. And then right away, as soon as I 
took it off. I'll go in with my mascara. Now I used to use, I don't have any on hand, I used to use the Maybelline The Rocket and that was like my go-to mascara. And I would just do about two or three layers of that. And if I ever wanted like some extra volume, I would go on the back side of my lashes and coat those too. Then I'm gonna go and do my lower lashes and again I would normally do two to three coats. Normally only two on the bottom. Oh my god, this is literally how I would wear my makeup when I was 16, like to a T. It's like taking me back. Okay, we're almost done the look. Um, to finish off this very glamorous look, I would finish off with a lip balm. I just thought lipstick was too hard to maintain and you needed to touch it up too much. And then lip gloss, that was too sticky and just annoying. So I just thought I would skip that whole hassle altogether and I would just go with a lip balm. So I would just apply that on there. And then there you go, that is basically the look. Okay, so here you have it, the Jaclyn at 15, 16 makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed the video today. I think the best thing that you can do is look back at your mistakes and just laugh at yourself. So let me know in the comments down below what makeup mistakes you used to do because I would love to hear them. Thanks guys so much for watching the video and I will see you guys very soon. Bye!